<laughs> so the lecture tonight, the, um, we're going to be talking about virtues, knowing what matters most. So um, it seems nowadays that uh, we hardly listen to the word virtues. Who currently values virtual qualities and seek to encourage them? Very few. Some might say it's a custom from the past. Virtues, however, are not so distant, distant from our way of being. The dictionaries define virtue as firm and constant disposition for the practice of the good. There's virtue every time there's a resistance to a bad tendency. So every time we um, know that there's, we're doing something wrong and we resist that, that's a virtue already. We already practice the virtues just by avoiding doing something that we know is bad for us. It doesn't matter if it's something that, you know, will hurt our body or um, anything that it's not good for our body or our soul. So it's not so far from our possibilities, even if we are not used to speak of those values or more to cultivate them in our um, selves or in our environment. We have a pattern of behavior that we will one day experience virtues spontaneously. We will get there without costing us any effort. We will react naturally by habit with good feelings without any difficulty. So who believes that? We're going to get there one day. Just see. Yep. So our agenda tonight is um, we're going to talk about the definition of virtue. Um, we're going to see the five virtues of St. Vincent um, the Pope, St. Vincent the Pope. Um, the story of Frank, uh, Ben Franklin, Benjamin Franklin, and the first virtue. So, how can we define virtue? This is according to the spiritists. It's the combination of all the essential qualities that constitute a good man. The man possesses these qualities fulfills constantly the law of justice, love, and charity. He carries the feeling of charity and love for others. He is good, humane, and benevolent to all. He places faith in God, in his goodness, justice, and wisdom. He has faith in the future, believing that one day we will have all the virtues to become a good person, right? Uh, he finds satisfaction in the benefits he spreads and in the service he provides. He does not harbor hatred, nor anger, nor desire for revenge. And this is um, from the book that we study in our um, in our uh, group of uh, study of the gospel. So which is the most uh, meritorious of all the virtues? And this is a question 983 from the, the Spiritist book. All virtues are meritorious, for all of them are signs of progress on the upward road. There's a virtue in every act of voluntary resi resistance to the seductive influence of evil tendencies. But the sublimity of virtue consists in the sacrifice of self-interest to the good of others. 
the highest of all virtues is that which takes the form of the widest and most disinterested kindness. Disinterested kindness. So, um, again, here it says what I said in the beginning. Every time we resist a bad habit, we are practicing um, a virtue. So, um, we're going to be looking at the example of um, some people who have conquered all the virtues through practice and devotion, and some uh, who came very close to, the, to, the, to conquering them. So, some conquered all the virtues and um, got to the highest place or we can say become um, a pure spirit and some were very close so we're gonna see a few uh, examples and the first one is um, St. Vincent de Paul that in the beginning of the reading uh, that Regina did it talks about him and he did not teach the virtues by instructions, but he lived and modeled them all. So, the following are the five char characteristics, virtues of Saint Vincent de Paul. So, I separate in three um, parts. So, the first one, it's the virtual, then the definition, and then questions that we can ask ourselves to see if we can uh, if we're practicing that uh, virtual or if we can uh, start practicing so the first practice the first virtue is simplicity and the definition according to Saint Vincent Paul okay not the dictionary according to him um, the quality or I'm sorry, it's the opposite. It's according to the diction to the dictionary. The quality or condition of being easy to understand or do for the sake of simplicity, this chapter will concentrate on one theory. So the questions that we can ask ourselves, do I always speak the truth? Do I say as they are or as I want them to be? We should ask that all the time. Um, the next one is gentleness. The quality of being kind, tender, or mild-mannered. Do I try to solve conflicts with gentleness? Do I know how to temper my anger so to be gentle in giving situations? <clears throat> so that um, we should remember that question every single day when we face any situation, right? In the traffic, when we have to deal uh, with a problem with a coworker, at home, with her family, so that's a very important um, virtual. All of them are, but that's some, that's the question that we should ask ourselves to see how we're doing. Um, the next one is humility, a modest or a low view of one's own importance, humbleness. Do I recognize the truth, the truth of who I am? Do I treat people as well as I think um, I should? Modification, mortification. And this word we have to um, clarify because mortification, if you look at the dictionary, um, you can find the definition as self-inflict, 
that's how you say self reflect when you like um um many years ago in some religions they would um self punishment yes but we'll see the definition as um saint vincent paul um why they put that there so if you live according to the flesh you will die but if by the spirit you put the death mort uh, mortified the deeds of the body you will live so i will explain that in the next um uh, slide so when was the last time i gave up something good to a better thing how do I experience multiplication in my daily life? And zeal? Is that how you pronounce? Zeal? It's a great energy of enthusiasm in pursuit of a cause or an object. Objective. How does my life reflect my passion and my love for life in Christ? So those are the virtues that St. Vincent de Paul lived by. And he, um, he was a very um, kind person. He was very, he helped everyone. He um, really modeled those virtues. He just didn't talk about it. He modeled them. So, as he says here, he explains um, um, mortification. What is the word? Mm -hmm. Yeah. When we, when uh, Saint Vincent invited us to practice mortification, he's talking about self-discipline in a spirit of uh, penance. He urges us to let go of any worldly inclination that rob us from our freedom to follow Jesus and to work for the establishment of his kingdom. Um, so one example is um, like, instead of drinking water, instead of drinking alcohol, that I know it's something that will be bad for me, uh, I'll drink water. It's changing a bad habit to a good one <clears throat> and um the next person is benjamin franklin and he is another example of a man who defined um his virtues and values and um aspired to live by them and his his story is very interesting because benjamin franklin he was an author, he was an inventor, he was a father, a politician, um, and the first American ambassador to France. He invented uh, bifocals, swimming flippers, light, uh, lightning rods, and the uh, Franklin stove. He founded the first public life in the United States a hospital, an insurance company, and a fire department. He helped write the Declaration of the Independence of the United States and the Constitution. He wrote an autobiography in the mid of his life, and short before his death in his 80s, he completed his memoir. Franklin was truly a Renaissance man. He was one of the greatest citizens and thinkers the world has ever seen. But Franklin was not always a great or successful man. At age of 17, he ran away from his home in Boston because of an argument he had with his brother. Franklin tried in business and failed, not once but twice. He was a father and a single parent of an, okay, help me with this word, illegitimate, illegitimate, 
illegitimate son, who mother abandoned the child, unable and unwilling to live with Franklin. As a young adult, Franklin was by almost any measure, and especially his own measure, a dismayal failure. He lived, he lived, his life was confused, difficult, and not at all satisfying to Franklin or to anyone else. He decided to change. Franklin started by taking a critical look at his behavior. And he found that too often he traveled down unvirtuous roads that naturally, natural inclination, custom, or company might lead him into as he could. He fell short of his ideas in most um, than a dozen areas of his life, he concluded. He ate and drank, drank too much. He talked too much, especially about himself. He spent more money than he should. He didn't finish all his goals, and so on. In another words, he wrestled with all with the very same human urges, flaws and proclivities that now pull up our New Year's resolution. Who here never did a New Year's resolution? I will change the beginning of the year or who never had uh, or who, who doesn't have a, a self-help book? You know, those books that help us to become, you know, to change and, and you know, the self-help books. Um, so he was just like us, you know, we're always struggling with our um, troubles and we are always, we recognize a lot of our um, faults and we are always trying to change but sometimes we don't uh, know how to start. And it's better when, when we already recognize our faults because a lot of times we have um, behaviors that we cannot see, right? Other people see, but we cannot see. So then he considered various virtues that if mastered, would counter, counteract his unwanted behavior. So his list, he lists 13 virtues, temperance, silence, order, resolution, frugality, industry, sincerity, justice, moderation, cleanliness, tranquility, chastity, and humility. 13 wasn't a nod to the original colonies, now, nor was it random. He chose 13 because that number fits neatly in a calendar. Multiply, multiply it by four and you get 52, the number of the weeks of the year. So Franklin, uh, take a single virtue at a time, work on it for a week and then move on to the next trying to fix everything that's wrong with with you all at once is overwhelming he decided the virtuous path needs to be broken down to give each area some concentrated time of intention and effort every 13 weeks he recycle the cycle re repeated itself. So every 13 weeks, he started again. So every week he chose one virtual and worked the whole week. And then after those 13 weeks, he started again. And he kept doing this his entire life. He did that. He accounted for his progress on a chart and shared his scam with others. 
Modern social science has since proved that tracking and accountability are two key components of success habit foundation. You know, like who does, who ever did uh, Weight Watchers or you count and you put in the chart, that works, that helps, right? When, when you write it down and, and um, you keep, um, you keep track of your progress. So Franklin explained how humility was added to his list after friend told him he needed to work on it. Isn't that nice? You know, when a friend comes and tells us what we need to work on in a nice way, and we accept that. Um, to be aware of a single shortcoming within ourselves is more useful than to be aware of a thousand in someone else. This is a phrase from the Dalai La Lama. <clears throat> Franklin did not reach the peak of the virtual, virtual mountain. On the whole, though, I never arrived at the perfection I had been so ambitious of obtaining, but fell short of it, he wrote. Yet, as I was, by, the, uh, by trying hard, a better and a happier man than I otherwise should have been if I had not attempted it. So he recognized that he did not um, reach um, all his goal here, but he kept trying. Always, he kept trying his entire life. And uh, in another article that I read about this, it says that uh, one of the virtues that he fell was uh, humility. And he recognized that. So it's something that, you know, it's a good example and um, um, something that maybe can inspire us to, to do what he did. Um, so a question, can a man be virtuous if he brags about his virtue? That's all about the, la the, the reading that Regina did in the beginning, right? No, because in varying any virtue, Man devotes the lack of the principal quality that characterizes it, which is modesty. The ostentation of a virtue shows the vice that most oppose it, oppo opposes it, which is pride. Oh, so um, let's talk a little bit about um, humility. Humility, the first virtue. Humility is a virtue much forgotten among 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 most among us uh, you or us, among us. One of many examples given very few have been followed. However, it is possible to be, however, is it possible to be charitable to your neighbor without being humble? <clears throat> we studied that a lot in the gospel according to the spiritus. Um, and um, Kardec or Jesus, always um, said that to us like we cannot be um, we cannot practice charity if we can, if we're not humble right because um, what is the opposite of humbleness it's pride right so Saint um, Augustine um, 
who we heard in a lot of the lectures here. Um, Saint Augustine, when we talk about um, um, self-discipline or, you know, um, he is the one that uh, there's a question, how can we become a better person? And he recommends that we analyze our conscience every night before we go to bed to know if we how how we did during the day if we hurt someone's feelings and what can we do the next day to become a better person and he says humility is the foundation of all the other virtues hence in the soul in which vir this virtue does not exist there cannot be other virtue except in matter appearance so if we um, don't have humility um, all the other virtues that it seems like we have we didn't conquer yet it's masqueraded um, another virtuous person was um, Socrates and there are many lessons from him and most of them talking about uh, humility and uh, the only true wisdom is in knowing you don't know nothing um, know yourself how can we become a better person how can we work on our um, uh, vices by knowing yourselves right the only true wisdom is oh, say, uh, knowing nothing he not only preached and explained the virtues but lived them he valued reason in the search for the right and the truth humility the first virtue many times life put us on our knees to dispose ourselves of our virtues and conquer virtues starting with humility And finally, what is the most perfect type of uh, type that God has offered the man to serve as a guide and modern as virtual? Jesus, right? For man, just Jesus is the king of moral perfection. Mankind, uh, man can aspire, aspire, right? Aspire. aspire to on earth god offers him as the most perfect model so all the teachings that jesus gave left us um if we follow his teachings we will conquer our um goals in becoming a better person right so i hope um the talk tonight will inspire us to um, become a better person or maybe uh, we can follow um, St. Vincent Paul's exercise and Ben Franklin's exercise and maybe track, you know. Uh, one thing that they say is very important, when we make a list of the virtues that we want to work on, we should um, define what that, what that virtue means to us. Not by the dictionary, but what we understand by that virtue, virtue and what that represented to us and how um, that will help us to become a better person. So that's one thing that Benjamin did. Um, St. Vincent Paul did, and um, um, Aristoteles did that also. And Aristoteles also had a list of virtues that he, and it was also 13 um, virtues that he worked on. Um, and he also recommends that. He says we need to 
look at the virtual, choose the virtuals that we need to work on it. And we for sure are not gonna um, change from one time to, you know, really fast. Um, ben Franklin worked on that list for, the, for his entire life. And he, on his memoir, he says that he didn't achieve uh, all of them, right? And the other thing we need to think of is that um, the influence of the world, world that we live in, we don't live in a perfect world, right? So um, that influences oh, that influences us also. But the more we work in ourselves, the more we help the ones around us to change. So I hope this is um, a good um, lesson for all of us. Uh, maybe we can start making a little bit and work on the things that we need to change. Maybe write, you know, in the mirror, in the bathroom, when we, in the morning, when we uh, get up, the first thing we do, we look in the mirror and we see the virtual that we, we want to work that week. And, you know, maybe we can little by little uh, work on them. And um, always following uh, the most perfect uh, model that God gave us, which is this system.